If you do not learn this skill, your social life will never bloom into its full potential. And that skill is the art of mastering social cues. I think we've all experienced at one point or another not understanding what a person or people think of us until it's too late. This was not a foreign experience to me. When my social skills weren't as developed, I had a tough time understanding the social cues that happen during a conversation to gauge how the other person feels, especially with a woman. Because of that, they felt like some sort of foreign species that spoke a language incomprehensible to me. And that language was social cues. Social cues are the verbal and nonverbal aspects of communication with one another that are usually expressed through the face, body, voice, or how we move during a conversation. It's the little things we tend to overlook, and the nonverbal aspects of social cues have actually been estimated to make up 65% of the way in which we communicate with others. If you've ever wondered why you've been absolutely captivated by someone's ability to communicate even the most boring of things, or how someone tends to pick up the vibe of a person after one small conversation, it's likely that these people have a very good understanding of social cues. To help you improve your ability to master social cues, I'm going to explain to you five hypothetical hypothetical scenarios where the situation and your role in it slightly differ. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go over some really unique ways in which you can improve your ability to notice these social cues and become more charismatic. Scenario number one, the uninterested person. Let's say you're trying to strike up some conversation with a coworker. You're both on break and you go over to the coworker to ask him how his day has been so far. Yeah, hasn't been too bad, the man says. Would just like this day to be over though. The coworker has his back against a counter with his legs facing away from you. His face does not indicate that of a smile, but more so just a general distaste. Now this body language of his shoulders not facing you could be just because it's comfortable for him to put his back on that counter, but it also could indicate that he is not interested in conversing with you, especially if he didn't start to turn to you when you approached him. When someone's genuinely interested in you and they're not nervous, their body will be facing you. But you continue on. Yeah, my, my day was pretty boring too. What, what did you do today? When asking this question, you give off a very nervous tone and your coworker can pick up on this. When your voice has some shakiness in it and it isn't said with a lot of fluency, that is signaling to your coworker that you're nervous and you're not confident about this conversation. People tend to act off the energy you give them, and so the coworker finds himself not feeling fully comfortable either, which might be visibly apparent by certain subtle gestures, such as a crossing of the arms, looking around, or fidgeting. The coworker responds, uh, just the same old stuff. There's not really much eye contact made when they say this, and they are still turned away from you. So by now, it's clear that this person is not really interested in talking to you. They are being short with their words, they're looking away, and they aren't turned to you after a long period of time. Now there's either one of two things you can do in this scenario. The first is that you can simply just leave your coworker alone. You can do that by saying, all right, well, it's time for me to go do X. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Or you can try and make the conversation more interesting by being more interested in them and adjusting based on the feedback you get. So for that second approach, here's what you would do. You need to approach this by sort of mirroring their attitude. If you want someone to ease into a conversation and be more willing to talk to you, you have to make them feel like you're on the same page as them. And one of the best ways to do that is to mirror some of their cues. So you could actually lean on the counter next to them or mirror their laid back tone of voice. Either way, just make sure your body posture is unthreatening and open by keeping yourself relaxed, have your arms down to your sides, and make direct eye contact. When you do that, you could ask a more interesting question, such as, I know that look. Work's been draining you as much as it's been draining me lately. What is it you think you'd really like to do with the time you have to spend working on this job? Now let's say after asking that, the person starts to give you more of a positive response. Their eyebrows go up and they start to smile a bit, then they decide to turn to you and give you eye contact. This is a clear indication that they are interested in talking about their pursuits outside of work, and that's where you should lead the conversation. This is what is called a conversation spark, when the thing you say clearly shows nonverbal cues of interest like the ones that I just described. Man, don't I wish I had more time to make my music, they say in an uplifting, more welcoming tone. And then you can continue building off of this, asking them different questions that get them to talk about their pursuits while adding in your own input. 
Now, even after experimenting with a couple different questions, they still might be just as unresponsive as they were when you first approached them. And if that is the case after trying a second or third time, you should just leave them. Because they either aren't interested in talking to you, or it's someone that you probably wouldn't get along with anyways. Your hygiene when approaching someone also matters a lot. You can tell a lot about how a person feels about your hygiene if they are trying to hide a more disgusted look or try to move away from you slightly. Wearing nice clothes and taking care of your body, especially your skin, is one of the best ways to have a more positive first impression. And to help with that, I recommend using the skincare routine that I use, which is Tiege Hanley. I don't think you can underestimate just how much having a good skincare routine can increase your confidence and self-worth. Tiege Hanley provides you with all the products you need if you want to easily wash or moisturize your face without a ton of different steps. I recommend starting with their level 1 system, which comes with a daily face wash, an exfoliating scrub, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, and a PM moisturizer. I'm using the face wash almost every day, and the AM moisturizer, that is always going on every day before I go outside. Having a face moisturizer with SPF in it is so crucial to not prematurely aging from the sun. I don't know about y'all, but I am trying to look this young when I'm like 50 years old, and I can possibly achieve that if I take better care of my skin and have an SPF moisturizer. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews, and as a Tiege Hanley member, you get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, access to exclusive monthly deals, and free US shipping. First impressions are everything, and people will be able to tell how much you take care of yourself through your hygiene. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description box and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. So don't miss out on this deal. Go take advantage of it. Click that link and get started today. Scenario number two, the nervous person. Now let's imagine a scenario like this. You're with a person who is just as nervous, if not more nervous than you. Maybe you feel more nervous than usual because that person is nervous and you're feeding off of their energy. I know I can think of so many instances in which I was talking to someone who was really awkward awkward and that made me feel unusually awkward. And when that happens, this is what I would do. So first, you could tell the person was nervous based on these social cues. Very closed body language in the form of looking down, twiddling their thumbs, rounding their shoulders, having tight, tense, or pursed lips, or their tone of voice was similar to the first example scenario. If you want them to feel more comfortable, then in this instance specifically, you gotta slowly get them to mirror you instead of the other way around. This might be a good time to share something a little personal about yourself, but not too personal if you guys just met. Instead, start with something slightly vulnerable. If you're talking about, let's say, each other's backgrounds, you can say, yeah man, my childhood was kind of hilarious. My mom used to pack a salad with each lunch and I would get roasted for it. They'd call me health boy and stuff like that. Then, like always, you pay attention to the feedback they give you based on their social cues. Perhaps they will agree with you and be more responsive by opening up their body language a little, or maybe laugh and say, Really? These are good signs that the person is starting to feel more comfortable with you. If they no longer look so tense, like they're holding on to a massive dump, then you should continue explaining that point and maybe open up a bit more while increasing the amount of direct eye contact you're using. With a nervous person, it's probably not in your best interest to use a ton of eye contact initially because you're only going to intimidate them. And if that's their initial impression of you, it's going to be a lot harder to break that. Instead, you must slowly guide them to a place of comfort. Start by being relaxed and open open but very calm, like having a, hey, there's no danger, aura portrayed by your social cues, kind of like how I am standing in this shot. But let's consider that other scenario. Perhaps for this person, you came on a little too strong. If this really was the case, they'd probably have an averse reaction. Maybe they pucker their lips and kind of nod their head while looking away, or scratch their head, and their tone of voice would sound like, oh, that's interesting. This is a sign that what you said made them uncomfortable. Now that's okay, everyone has a different comfort level, and it's common for people to come off as too strong sometimes, but if you are consistently getting that reaction, then it probably has something to do with what you're saying or how you're acting, so you really need to reflect on that and see what you are doing wrong. But if all is well and they start to open up a bit more, that's when you should start to really let them know, hey, it's all good here. 
you can trust me, through your social cues. Again, this means they are able to visibly see the palms of your hands, you are facing them, smiling and being attentive, and you are coming off as calm and cool in your voice, which would be similar to how I'm talking to you all right now. Eventually, you should get to the point where this person is completely eased up and is comfortable with you so long as they don't have social anxiety. Sometimes you don't know whether they have social anxiety or not, but maybe they reveal it to you or something, or you can just tell, and if that's the case, then it isn't what you are doing, they just have social anxiety. Scenario number three, over explaining slash talking too much. Now it's one thing to be too vulnerable and disclose too much information when you first meet someone, but it's another thing entirely to overshare, over explain, and talk way too much to the point where you don't let anyone else have a chance to speak. If there's one piece of advice I can give to people like this, it's that the best conversationalists are the best listeners who ask the best questions and don't talk that much. Let's start with a situation where you might be talking too much and you don't even realize it. You're at a social event and someone asks you if you enjoy where you live. You then go off on a tangent about your apartment complex manager, why you had to escape your home life, and the food you were cooking at your apartment today. You can tell you are probably talking too much if the person or people you are talking to stop becoming as respondent and attentive. This may come out in the form of the person starting to look around the room for a way to escape the conversation, looking at their watch or phone for the time, starting to get antsy and putting their hands in their pockets while moving back and forth, or they just keep repeating really short terms like, wow, that's crazy, uh-huh, nice but in a disinterested tone. And the tone in which they say those last phrases really matter because they may just be trying to engage with your conversation, which we're gonna go over a little later. So if you catch these social cues, it's probably time to wrap it up and be like, but anyways, I might be rambling now, and then ask a question to them. Now let's flip the script. Let's say that someone is over explaining and talking too much to you after you ask them a simple question. You could technically start to do some of the cues that we just went over to show that you're not interested interested in the conversation and that they're talking too much, but intentionally doing that is kind of rude. Instead, I would try to find some way into their conversation that lets you ask a question and puts an end to their statements by pivoting what you're talking about. So let's say you're talking about some sort of recent political drama and this person has been going on for a long time and is saying, yeah, and we all know the world is fucked, but this one time I had like this freak panic attack over a piece of news and it made my heart palpitate and so I went to the doctors and they said nothing was wrong and then, then you kind of just butt in and say, oh man, that's crazy. So the doctor said nothing was wrong? And that'll kind of stop them in their tracks before they say yes or no. Then you can start adding in your own input and kind of politely interrupt them. Or if you'd like to leave the conversation, just reply with something like, well, I'm glad that's all taken care of. What do you have going on tomorrow? That last question is one of the best ways to leave a conversation. By switching the conversation from the present to the future, you are subconsciously preparing them for a graceful exit. And once they answer that question, you can just say, awesome. Well, I gotta go now, but it was so nice to talk to you and just make your way out. Scenario four, the group approach. Let's now imagine a scenario where you are trying to go up to more than one person, and I'm gonna use this opportunity to explain to you how you should enter a conversation that's already going on. First, you need to identify whether this group is having an open or closed conversation. If all their eyes are facing each other, all their shoulders are facing each other, their arms are folded, and they have very serious expressions, it's probably not in your best interest to go and interrupt them as those are the signs of a closed conversation. If the group has a relaxed body language, roaming eyes, some people are smiling and laughing, and at least some of their shoulders are facing the room instead of each other, then this is a more relaxed, open conversation that you can approach. In any approach, it is crucial that your social cues indicate that you are trustworthy and friendly. This means you walk up to them at a normal pace, your arms are down by your side, not in your pockets or crossed, and you're smiling as you approach them. Now it's been shown that one of the most effective opening lines for approaching one or more people is, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I know it sounds a little too basic to be true, but that really is the best way to get something started up. A close second would be to compliment something in their immediate appearance, but that might be a more effective strategy if you're only approaching one person. You can then introduce yourself and ask them, 
Do you mind if I join you guys? And shake hands with everyone while asking for their names. While shaking hands, give them eye contact and smile. These cues are subconsciously telling people, hey, I'm confident with myself, I'm friendly, and I can be trusted. If they say yes, then great. But if they say no, then they either aren't very friendly people, they have a very serious conversation going on that they don't want you to interrupt, or you gave off some sort of weird vibe. Either way, it'll be important to reflect on what worked and what didn't after this interaction. Scenario number five, attraction building. In this final scenario, we're gonna go over a situation in which you're trying to increase attraction and intimacy by focusing on voice intonation, physical touch, and proximity. You're on a first date with a girl and it's going pretty well. You've applied a lot of the things that I've taught throughout this video as well as my other social skills videos and you are maintaining about 80-90% to 90 eye contact, asking them questions about themselves and being genuinely interested in their world and background, smiling, being clever, and not taking yourself too seriously. When listening to them, you are also using what is called back channel cues and this is what I said I was going to go over later. Back channel cues are these small confirmations that show that you are attentively listening to them by saying things like, uh-huh, mmm, right, right, yeah, in a friendly tone while nodding your head. This shows them that you really care about what they have to say and you are engaged. Well, maybe you've gotten to the point where you want to show them that you're even more interested in them using social cues. In all social situations, proximity matters. Gradually getting physically closer to your date and adjusting based on the feedback that you get is a great first step. And you want to make this kind of naturally happen over time. So maybe you're both sitting on a couch and through conversation, you just end up inching closer and closer to them. If they are receptive to that, they might inch closer to you or show more signs of wanting that through a smile, a lot of eye contact, and perhaps even touching your hand. But if they end up closing off their body, turning away from you, or inching backward, that's a sign you should back off as they don't feel that comfortable with you yet. Another way to gauge a potential partner's attraction and comfort for you is by initiating the physical touch yourself. Again, with this especially, you want to start out slow. If you're both standing up, then you can do this. While talking about something, once you bring up a more surprising or interesting point, you can have your eyebrows raise up, eyes widen, and then put your hand on their shoulder. This kind of emphasizes the point you're trying to make or the specific thing that you're talking about. And again, see what type of feedback that you get from this. If you want it to be a more intimate but still not overbearing type of initiation, you can soften your voice while saying something and touch or grab their hand while you're sitting down. Kind of like what I am doing here, but only when it feels appropriate because if you do this in the wrong situation and it's just, it doesn't feel right, it's gonna come off as really cringy. You may not know what is or isn't cringy at the start, but if you start to pay attention to the feedback they give you based on their social cues, then you'll have a better understanding of this eventually. But other than just putting yourself out there more and getting into more social settings, what is something you can do right now to improve your ability to pick up on social cues more? Well, for those with ADHD, autism, or social anxiety, it is definitely going to be a bit harder for you to pick up on these things, but I think that just about anybody can improve on this. The first thing I would say you can do is to practice with yourself or with a trusted friend. I've talked about this in a previous video, but filming yourself and seeing how you are acting and what social cues you are displaying well or not well can really give you some great insight into how to improve. Alternatively, you could practice talking and presenting yourself in a better manner with one of your friends too who can give you feedback. Improving your ability to understand social cues requires you to pay attention to the little things not just in conversation, but in all of life. And to do so, I have personally done this through meditation, reading fiction, and writing short stories like the ones that I write for my YouTube channel. Meditation allows you to slow down and be more present during conversation, so you can consciously and subconsciously pick up what's going on better. Reading good fiction forces you to pay attention to the little details that we often overlook as human beings who are wired to usually only care about things important to our survival. And writing short stories about your life is kind of similar to this too. Not only you start to gain more self-awareness as to why you think and act the way you do and focus on these small details more, but the added bonus of this writing practice is that it usually makes you a better conversationalist too. Because storytelling is one of the best ways to engage with people verbally. You can do something as simple as just writing about a small event that happened in your day on Google Docs with a bunch of little details in it for just 10 minutes. I'm also going to leave a link to some fiction books that I recommend in the description below too. And lastly, you can study people 
people whom you'd like to become more like, whether fictional or non-fictional. By consuming a lot of media that has that person in it and paying attention to what they do that works, you can start to essentially fake it till you make it by acting like you are this person until you eventually become your own version of them. Above all though, and I know I always say this, you need to practice. The more you engage in social settings, pay attention to these social cues, and reflect on what happened, the more these things that feel unnatural and tedious at the start become second nature to you. Thank you very much to all my patrons on Patreon. If you don't know what this is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where I put out exclusive content and you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. Link in the description to that. And I've made a lot of videos like this where you can improve your conversation skills and just become more interesting. And I have a whole playlist of those videos here if you want to check that out and improve your ability even more. Go click on that right now. Thank you for watching until the end and I'll see you.